<laughs> hey, yes, it is that time. November. Let's talk college football. Nothing but college football on this show. Uh, coming up, of course, you're going to be talking about uh, Alabama at LSU. One of the big games of the year in college football takes place Saturday night, CBS from uh, Death Valley. And uh, Bama is the touchdown favorite. We'll talk about that game along with four others that I'll be predicting. And we'll talk about my picks from this past week. If you pick the opposite of me, you're pretty happy. If you didn't, you're saying, damn you, sports savant, you're not much of a genius. In fact, you're an idiot. And the way I picked this past week, yeah, it was idiot-like. We'll go over the specifics as much as I don't want to from last week in just a little bit. But first, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the first college football playoff rankings, which came out this week. Uh, no surprise, Bama number one. You got uh, Clemson, Michigan, and Texas A&M running out the top four. The Aggies have been a surprise to be at the top four, but tougher strength of schedule, even though they've already lost once, which was a convincing defeat uh, courtesy of Alabama. Washington's undefeated, but they're out of the mix right now at number five. I'm telling you, Husky fans, as long as Washington continues to win, as long as they take care of Washington State at the end of the season and win the Pac-12 championship, go 13-0, the Huskies are going to be in the playoff no matter what Texas A&M does the rest of the season. So the poll right now means very, very little. The rankings from the college football playoff rankings, those uh, those bozo heads. Now, let's go ahead and have uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. We do this every week as far as the Big 12. Thumbs up to both Oklahoma State and Texas for knocking off two of the previous three uh, Big 12 undefeateds. And by the way, these two teams were undefeated overall. Oklahoma State beating West Virginia, who came in ranked in the top 10. Cowboys, they found a running game. Okay, they got a running game now. And the defense played good as well against a good West Virginia offense. And Texas, tell you what, Charlie Strong, if he coaches against ranked competition, you know, he does better than against non-ranked competition, if you can believe that. And the Longhorns, you know, thanks to the passing game, but mostly thanks to uh, Foreman, the running back, the Longhorns got a big win at home against previously unbeaten Baylor. Again, Charlie Strong coaches against uh, the ranked teams fares better than against non-ranked teams. That's still, um, that, that still puzzles me. <laughs> um, thumbs down, and this is really what puzzles me too, thumbs down, way, way down to TCU. Last season, they went 10-3. and three. That's right, only lost three games. Now, they have already lost four. Arkansas, West Virginia, my Sooners, and the latest, a home loss to Texas Tech. And TCU has proven two things. One, right now they're, they're, they're sucking you-know-what. And number two, they made Texas Tech look like they had a defense, okay? Um, Red Raiders not taking anything away from them. A hard-fought overtime win on the road, so you give it up, you know, the Cliff King, Kingsbury squad is trying to get to bolt eligibility. Um, but at the same time, TCU has been a flat-out disappointment um, in 2016. Now, we're going to go the good, bad, and the ugly. My look at college football outside the Big 12. The good, Clemson Tigers. You know what? It's kind of like the uh, old model of the Raiders. Just win, baby. And, you know, they had a nail-biter against Louisville. Won it. Nail-biter against North Carolina State. Lucked out, but won it. But this game took all the skill of Dabo Sweeney squad and the play of Watson at quarterback. And Clemson survives in Tallahassee at Doak Campbell against Florida State. So the Tigers remain unbeaten, and they look like they are on a course to get back to that college football playoff and try uh, to finish off a perfect season, which they almost did a year ago. Washington Huskies, talked about them earlier. A big win showing highlights right now over my right shoulder of their victory over Utah. Top 20 team in Utah. Difficult place to win in Salt Lake, but Washington got the job done. And the Auburn Tigers, tell you what, since that rough start in September, one of those losses was against Clemson in close fashion. The Auburn Tigers, Gus Malzahn, they look pretty darn good, and they look like they can give Alabama all they want in late November for the Iron Bowl. Right now, the Tigers are playing incredible football, and they get a win on the road against Ole Miss. Now, the bad, the Miami Hurricanes. Remember, they were unbeaten in the top 10 in early October, but lost to Florida State. Mark Rick's squad has gone downhill ever since the latest loss, which is a fourth of the year at Notre Dame. And Notre Dame is having one of the worst seasons that we can remember in, in quite some time. But Miami can't even beat those guys. And the Tennessee Volunteers, three losses this season. It's one of those teams that has the talent, but can never put it together. And look, losing at AM, understandable. Losing to Alabama, 
Very understandable. Almost everybody who plays the Tide will. But losing at South Carolina, South Carolina is terrible. And yet the Vols still couldn't win. So three losses for Tennessee, all in the SEC, and in big-time danger of not even playing in the SEC championship. How is that going to look on Butch Jones' resume? And the ugly, we're going to stay in the SEC, the Missouri Tigers. Missouri is 2-6 and six and has yet to win a conference game, and they just lost at home by double digits to the football power we know as Kentucky. Yeah, Mark Stoops' team is not the worst team in the country. In fact, they've improved since he's arrived. But you can't beat Kentucky at home. That's right there, a red flag that your squad is in trouble. And Missouri, they are the bottom feeders of the SEC East. They're the bottom feeders of a bad division. All right, so let's go ahead and now break down how I did last week. And the only game I won last week was the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Florida beating Georgia. Maybe I'm a victim of getting a little bit too excited about the world's largest outdoor cocktail party because maybe I had too many cocktails because my other four picks... I went down in flames just like Jesse James. I lost West Virginia, Oklahoma State. I lost TCU, Texas Tech. I lost Ohio State, Northwestern. And I lost Clemson, Florida State. I took the Tigers. They won, but they did not cover. So another disappointment. One and four this past week. Just pick the opposite of me. You're going to be fine for the year 17 and 23. Yeah, that is digging my own grave. But... I've lost my shovel, so that means I don't have to dig anymore. We can get back on track with five games this week against the spread. We're going to first talk about um, a Big 12 game, Oklahoma State at Kansas State. I know the Cowboys are coming off a nice win. Got to play at Manhattan. We know how good Bill Snyder teams are at home. Kansas State is favored by just three. I think the Wildcats will be the more disciplined team. They'll take care of the ball better. Give me the Wildcats minus a three. Texas at Texas Tech, I'm not picking either side. But I'm going to take the over. The total in this game is 81. Neither defense is that good. And I'm being very kind when I say that. Uh, so give me the over between Texas and Texas Tech. That is 81 points. And the other three games are all seven-point favorites. And I like the favorites, okay? Um, talking about first, Iowa at Penn State. It's been a disappointing year for the Hawkeyes. And Penn State's been a little bit better than what I thought. And actually, quite a bit better than what I thought. And they're only giving seven at home. Give me the Nittany Lions. Uh, minus a touchdown. You got Wisconsin at Northwestern. I know the Northwestern Wildcats uh, are better now than they were in September when they had no offense. But the Badgers have been one of the nice surprises here in college football, considering all that they lost and considering that uh, Wisconsin is still a very difficult team to try to score points on. So give me the Badgers on the road, minus the seven. And talking about one of the big games of the year, LSU. Since the firing of Les Miles, has looked like a different team playing better. They're at home. It's going to be under the lights. We know how crazy it can get in Baton Rouge. But I don't care. Alabama, any challenge you give them, they are going to not only pass the test, but they're going to ace the test. And you might even have the tie down early. It might be a close game at halftime. Bama plays a full game, and Bama doesn't care who you are. They will run right over you in Tuscaloosa or anywhere else. Bama is clearly the best team in college football this year. And right now, the second-best team in college football, as of right now, doesn't even hold a candle to the tide. So give me Alabama minus the seven points. That's Let's Talk College Football for this week. Make sure to catch my post game of Iowa State and Oklahoma sometime late Thursday or early Friday. A rare non-Saturday game for my Sooners, and hopefully they don't get spooked by the Cyclones. Catch you next time.